What's going on everybody? It's jscar99 back with another Hyron tutorial and this one we're going to be doing Blood of the Dead 2, 3, and 4 player Hyron tutorial. Um, neither of the spots that I'm going to show you work solo but solo is a whole different story that I don't feel like doing. So here's the uh, elixirs you want to run. Um, you don't Honestly you don't need any elixirs. You really don't. Um, those are just the ones you would use. You don't really need them, quite honestly. Winter's Whale, again, you don't really need. It's kind of nice to have in case you get a little overrun. But yeah, Dying Wish to give you a second chance if you mess up. Uh, those two aren't necessary, but Ethereal Razor you're going to need, and you'll see why. Stone Cold Stronghold you're going to need as your modifier, and you'll see why later. These two are 100% necessary. The other two, not so much. And you have to have Stone Cold as your modifier. Next, you're going to want to have the Ragnaroks. This is so if someone goes down, you can revive them. They have to keep all their, they get to keep all their perks. That's very important in both of these spots. Wraith Fires, you're not really going to need them, but I guess it's nice to have them. You know, you really don't need equipment at all. Monkeys is what you're probably going to end up wanting to get. And then a Strife, um, you can kind of start with whatever. I just choose the Strife because you can melee the first four rounds and just gives you some bonus points. But yeah, most of this is required except Ethereal, Ethereal Razor. Stone Cold Stronghold and Ragnarok. I highly you need those three essentially. Uh, everything else kind of up to you. Um, personal preference, really. Yeah, it's not a whole big deal. What you run, you could run certain other things. Doesn't matter. I just you, you have to have Ethereal Razor as one of the three perks, and Stone Cold Stronghold has to be your modifier, and you have to have Ragnarok. Some like all three players or four players or however many players have to have Ragnarok. And then I do recommend getting monkeys. Um, you don't need to get monkeys. Um, it will help if things kind of get a little dicey. However, it's, again, not 100% required. So once you got everyone in your game kind of running the same, you want everyone running the same loadout. It helps when everyone has the same exact perk loadout. Uh, just so everyone can kind of be on track with one another. Like, all right, who, where do we need to go as a team and whatnot. Um, also, I, I kind of recommend some people running point drops because they can drop other people points. You can open doors quicker. You get set up faster. You can get the high rounds faster. So first thing you want to do is fill up the dogs. And there's the first dog in New Industries. And then you want to fill up the second dog in the cell block. And then my teammate actually does the third dog, so I don't have footage of that. But I promise it's a third dog. And he's on the warden, I like the warden's house on the outside. You should know where it is. Um, build the shield right here. You actually don't need the shield, but it's, I guess, handy. I, I guess. You, you do not need it whatsoever. Um, get the Hell's Retriever. You you do need the Hell's Retriever. Well, not necessarily. It, you just to get the free uh, free Blundergat, getting the skulls. The one in spawn is going to be one on the roof. I actually missed it. That's why it starts with me right there, so we're not going to talk about it. And then uh, there's another one up here. My buddy got the one at the dock and in the cell block, so I don't have footage of that. Get the Blundergat. Um, you, you don't have to get the free one. It doesn't really matter which one you get, the free or from the box. You just need one. And then obviously you're going you're gonna to need the code from uh, the, this room, Warden's office. Enter the code, and then you're going to go down to docks, and you're going to shield blast the uh, meter thingy that brings the crane over and you guys know what i'm talking about if you've done the easter egg you know exactly what i'm talking about it's to get the spoon or the spork or whatever you want it's the silver spoon i don't know i don't know i'm not a utensil expert but it's a silver spoon i think so you're gonna want to shield blast this and then the crane is gonna come on over which takes um it takes its sweet time getting over so i'm just gonna ad lib um you like jazz uh and then when it comes over I always wait a little bit so it stops swinging and then I throw my retriever just to 100% sure I hit it. And once I do that, clear as day, there's the spoon, you'll see it, everyone in the game has to have it, you grab it, done. Now only one person in the game has to do this. Place the spoon in the bathtub. And what you want to do is you want to go up to the roof with a version of the Blundergat that is not the Blundergat. So it's the Asagat, the Magmagat, or either upgraded version of them. You cannot use the Blundergat, or the, or I think it's the Street Sweeper, or the Sweeper when you upgrade it. It has to be a version of the Blundergat. I tested it, and I went through like three rounds, and it ended up not working because I didn't pay attention. So you're going to want to go up. I use the Acid Gat. Does, it does not matter which one. Like the, you know, it not, one's not faster than the other. It's, it's all how many zombies you're going to... It's zombie kill based. So it's not how you kill them or 
damage dealt is just zombies killed. And when you kill a zombie, you'll see blood falling from like that shower into the bathtub. Once you get enough kills, it'll stop showering. And when you hold X in the bathtub, you'll hear like a toilet flushing noise, kind of. And the blood will actually start to sink. That's when you know you're done. Once you've done that, you, the water tower will be oozing blood from the top. You can see it right there. You want to shoot the panels off. There's one panel. The panels are clear as day. Like, kind of look like construction panels on it. There's two, There's one on the roof. There's two from the catwalk you can shoot here. They're pretty obvious. There's one right there on the other side. This one I actually struggled immensely with. Um, if you notice, I'm out of ammo because I sprayed all of my ammo and could not hit it. I eventually found it after uh, looking up three different tutorials. <laughs> I could not find it. And there it is. You shoot it right there. And then you're going to walk up to the catwalk. And, and then everyone can uh, throw their tomahawk and then you get the golden spork. Once you have the golden spork, all you now all you now need is all your perks. You don't need anything else. You don't need a hellion. You don't need any fun weapons. All I recommend, the only thing I would recommend getting is monkeys. They're not necessary, but they are pretty convenient if someone goes down. So when you get to the cafeteria, the first thing you're gonna want to make sure that you need to have with this the spot will not work if this one thing isn't happen like isn't done. Both doors to the cafeteria cannot be opened. There is the door to the cafeteria from the cell block and the door to the cafeteria from the infirmary. Neither of these doors can be open. If either one of these doors are open, this spot will not work. Both doors have to be closed. So there are no doors, no doors open to this room except the fast travel. That is the only way you can get here. Once you end the round, this is, I always every round I always make sure both doors are closed because it's just I, I get anxious. So if both doors are closed. What you do is you sit to the left of the window, facing kind of the other side of the window. You just stand there. That's all you do is you just stand there. Now, what happens here is Ethereal Razor gives grants you bonus damage to your Golden Spork melee attack, as well as grants you the ability to kill multiple zombies at once with one swipe. So if you notice, I can kill two at once, I can kill three at once. I think you can kill up to four or five at once, just depending how many are there. And Stone Cold, if you're standing there long enough, grants you bonus health, which is a, obviously a bonus, but it also grants you bonus damage. Now what makes this spot so great is the fact that the Golden Spork, with combination of Ethereal Razor and Stone Cold as a modifier, it makes your melee weapon a one-hit at round 35. And if you know Black Ops 4 Zombies, you know Zombies' health do not increase after 35. Therefore, if your weapon is a one-hit at 35, it's a one-hit forever. So the Golden Spork with this combination of perks is a one-melee hit forever. It will not change. This is all you do. This is it. And here is, here is the proof of it. It is now around almost 130. And it's still just one hitting. This is all you do. You sit there and you spam your melee button. I do highly recommend changing your button layout instead of having to click the analog stick to melee. I mine is my B button. It makes it so much easier and it's it's just so much more convenient because pushing a B button is a lot easier than pushing that stick. It's so annoying. I got rid of both my guns the pack a bunch because why not? Now here's what happens when someone goes down. Notice he went down. My buddy walks over and places his Ragnaroks on him. And when when that happens, he gets revived and he keeps all of his perks. We cannot leave or that's a problem. I place my Ragnaroks and what it does is it creates a chain. So all the zombies, now look, all the zombies, if they get near that chain, die. And now no zombies can even get in the room right now. I throw a monkey just in case any zombies in the room are running around rampant. And it clears them all. This is my other game. This is four players. Same deal. Now, there are three windows. And you're wondering, well, what does the fourth player do? The fourth player is on dog duty. Or he's on break. So the fourth player can just be chilling and just watching a movie. Doesn't matter. But he has to kill uh, some dogs. There's a dog that comes after uh, certain players that oh, can be annoying. And you just, they just want to kill them. And they can be on warden duty just to kill wardens. They, they sometimes spawn. It's it's kind of iffy. I've had games where they spawn every few rounds. I've had games where they never spawn. This is the two-player spot. The cafeteria is a three- and four-player spot. Only works with three and four players. 
Two players you can try. It's dicey. I don't recommend it. This is the two-player two player spot. I highly recommend. My buddy did it. He has the world record for two-player Blood, Blood of the Dead. And my spot in there has the three- and four-player world record. Um, and it's simple as this. You just sit here. Your buddy's directly to the left of you. And you look at the door and you melee forever. And that's it. 